one of the Tennessee State Free Riders. I don't have a lot of I stories to tell you. Well. I came through Montgomery. Mm -hmm. When I got to Montgomery, these faithful people had already been here. And Montgomery was under martial law when I got here. <laughs> you know, I saw men with rifles and in strange little uniforms. You know. And I'm going, what has happened here? Uh, I went on to jail in Jackson, Mississippi, served my time in prison. I made a promise to myself, if somebody can mistreat me, well. you don't mistreat me. Therefore, after getting kicked out of Tennessee State and working with street gangs in Chicago, I was drafted and I never co cooperated with this government. I spent 10 years in exile away from this country. Wow. And I came back to this country somewhere in the late 70s and won my case against the American government. Because they grossly, they grossly violated my, my draft board right. I should have had a personal appearance before my draft board. Mm. And what they were doing we're just sending people to the front line. And I decided, you, you can't treat me like that. God didn't send me to this life mm. to let anybody mistreat me. You know? And I'm the guardian of this life. And it's left up to me to safeguard it. I have no heroic story to tell you. The time in parchment was hard. really hard. But I thank God for a white man here in the state of Alabama who was over the National Guard here, who kept the peace after all of this violence happened here. Because the buses were, were escorted through by General Grant. I don't know if he's still alive or not, but I thank God for that. When we hit the state line in Mississippi, though, it was on the Sunday. It got hot on that bus. It got awfully hot, you know. And the bus was air conditioned. So I don't have any heroic stories to tell, but these people to me are heroes. My comrades are right. heroes. Right. My name is Mary Jean Smith, and I'm from Nashville. I was a student at Tennessee Well A and I. I always do this. <laughs> I was a student at A&I, and I had participated in the, in the stand-ins. I got started kind of late. And I attended all the meetings. I went to all of the stand-in demonstrations. And I attended the meetings when they started talking about the Freedom Ride. But I, my mother didn't want me to go. She pleaded for me not to, not to go. And I said, OK, I'll get me a job because I was going back to school in the fall. And uh, I, went, I was on the bus that Saturday morning, and there were two uh, teenagers in front of me. They were white. They were listening to the radio, and they said, the uh, Freedom Rides are still fasting. And the little girl said, I hope all of those N-words die. <clears throat> and I said, okay. I knew I was supposed to have been there in the beginning and to kind of uh, reiterate what Rip said. If God has something for you to do, you're going to do it. It doesn't matter. That's right. So when people ask me, how did you become a freedom rider? I said, I didn't choose to. I was called. Say it. So I got off the bus. I went and saw uh, Kwame. And I said, is it too late for me to go? He said, no. He said, be back here at 5 o'clock. It was about 1 o'clock then. <laughs> so I ran home and packed my suitcase and called my mother and told her I was going. She said, if you have to go, go ahead. And that's what I did. And I'm glad I did. I wish I had been on the very first front line, but things have a way of 
work it the way they're supposed That's to work. Right. You, can't, you can't hurry nothing. That's right. You do it when it's time to do it. And I'm glad I did it. Charles person, just a normal person. It's been a long time, but it seems quite appropriate that as we, America, begins to celebrate its heroes this weekend, well. that we also celebrate our heroes. We stand on the shoulders of many, and all too often we forget the things that they did that make life easier and better for all of us. Well. I'm a veteran of the, uh, Vietnam, and I'm a veteran of the Civil Rights Movement. I saw battles in July, the name, Atlanta, Anderson, <laughs> Birmingham. <laughs> I have ribbons and medals for my chest. I have scars and knots on my body. But I am truly blessed that I am here to tell my story. And let us not forget, as we celebrate this weekend, that we live in a wonderful country. Right. It's not the best, it's got the problems. Right. But if we work together, right. America's at its best when it works together. That's right. That's right. So let us all rededicate ourselves, not only this weekend, but for all the weekends to come.